Daniel Boone Motorcross Park in London, Kentucky was filled to capacity last weekend as racers and fans alike parked all the way up to the road leading into the venue when the 2007 WPSA ATV Tour came to town for rounds four and five of their championship series. Team Kawasaki seemed to be working on the bugs with the all new KFX 450R as factory racer Josh Kramer took the win in round two of games on Saturday. Mighty used to it, I can guarantee you that. It went good, just he's riding good, the bike's working great. It's on. It took a while to dial in, or what was just the hold up? It took a while to dial in, it took a while for the riders to get used to it, I think. It's just, uh, they're on it. Jason's hurt right now, otherwise he'd be right up there too. He loves his track. What's the difference? Uh, you know what, just a lot of suspension testing, um, just fine tuning stuff. And, and I'll tell you, the biggest difference is just time on the bike and the riders getting used to it is what it's coming down to. I mean, Jason was hauling ass yesterday, too, but until he crashed off the start, otherwise we'd have two of them up there. Along with all the factory and privateer teams in the pro class, there's a growing number of amateur teams looking to groom the pros of tomorrow. While at London, we decided to take a look at several of these amateur teams, the first of which was Jensen Motorsports and their owner, Joel Jensen. Uh, at the beginning of this season, we decided that uh, we had all went out and tried to seek individual sponsors. We sat down as a group and decided that we would... Uh, see what we could do by putting together a pretty impressive resume um, and some impressive riders, some riders that were on top in our local uh, racing area, which is Wisconsin, and we had a couple riders that had had some national experience uh, in the Pro OAM class and the A class. So what we did is we got together and um, put a resume together and really acquired some, some really good sponsorships this year. I'm standing here first with my son Cody Jansen. Uh, he's running production lights this year. He turns 16 next May, so we're, we're on a 300EX. Um, Tom Carlson did the motor for us, which is always, always uh, top-notch equipment. We're working with Jody Bateman on the suspension, Wayne at PEP on the shocks. And uh, as of right now, after this morning's race where we took second, um, I believe we're still leading the points by about five. We got uh, three more races left, three or four guys, four races left. And I think, uh, I think uh, we got something for them. We got some good PR and some magazines, and I think, uh, I think we got something for the rest of the group. I'm standing with uh, our two Pro-Am riders that, we've, that ha we have on the Jansen team this year. We have Eddie Dejanev here to my left, your right, and Corey Goff there. Um, both well-rounded racers, both guys are working their way up. The next step is the pro class. Uh, in the first Pro-Am moto, I uh, took a fifth, and then in the A moto, uh, I took a sixth. So uh, This morning I had a pretty good start uh, in the Pro-Am class, ended up uh, fourth in that. And uh, my A class, I had a real good start going, got pushed out in the beginning. And, uh, Ended up six overall on that one today. Uh, some other sponsors I'd like to thank besides Joel, my mom and dad, and everybody that's been behind me. Um, like Joel said, Stephen Robson's been helping me a ton. Uh, the Elka Suspension, CP Pistons, Laker Custom Plastics, uh, the Maxxis Tires, you know, everything is just, uh, you know, TC, TC Exhaust has been working real well. And uh, I just I can't thank everybody enough for uh, getting to this point. Well, I actually got hooked up with Jansen Motorsports uh, Racing A-Class back home. Um, I actually have an a engineering degree, um, and I work as an engineer as a profession. Uh, previously, previous uh, to coming to these guys as a, my part-time job, I actually worked on a, a pro road racing program. Um, did a lot of uh, chassis design and development work, uh, and I was able to... It, it helps me a lot to communicate with these riders since I'm an... Since I race uh, A class myself, um, helps me communicate. I can understand their feedback. I've been doing a lot of uh, suspension development on Corey's bike with Fred from Elka. Um, he's been a great asset. I think we're really making strides forward as to what we need to to progress his program. Um, Cody's a very naturally talented rider. Um, he listens to everything I tell him, which is great. Um, but uh, I'd like to stay on if we can actually progress to the point of professional riders and see where it goes from there. 
All right, well, I'm standing here with my mechanic, Jason Bussey. Uh, we've been together now uh, for about a year. It's, uh, it's a lot nicer having a full-time mechanic and to, you know, wrench on the bike at the races and uh, takes a lot of time and stress off of uh, me when I'm at the racetrack. Eddie and I started working together last year uh, towards the middle to end of July and that stuff and uh, Eddie was doing a lot of work on the bike himself and trying to train in fitness and eat and that stuff and, and had a lot of potential so we uh, kind of hooked up like I said mid-season or so late last year and finished the year off real strong. During the week we get out and uh, try to practice a couple days a week. We spend a few nights a week on bike maintenance and uh, a lot of phone calls during the week on making sure Eddie's uh, take care of himself, uh, eating right, uh, training, and uh, working hard at, at uh, putting everything forward into uh, making the team as uh, we are a success. Uh, right now we're sitting with Sam Rowe. We like to call him Factory Sam. Um, Sam runs in the 70 shifter and the 90 mod. In the 90 mod. 70 shifter class right now. Are we leading the points? Yeah, we are leading the points. We're leading the points. We had a good run this morning. Uh, Sam is our entry-level guy for the team, so we can continue to bring people into this group and, and grow them, tune them. They can ride with the Pro-Am guys when we practice. Uh, and what that's doing is giving experience to this guy to go to the next level to where Cody's at, and then after that to be able to hopefully to get where Eddie, Corey are and move on to the next level from there and become a pro. One large amateur team you might be familiar with are Team Cernic Suzuki's Media All-Stars. We caught up with their leader, George Cortez, to find out what the All-Stars are all about. Uh, my name is George Cortez. I'm the team owner and manager of the Media All-Stars ATV racing team. Uh, we're uh, probably the biggest amateur team out in ATV racing right now. We've got uh, 16 riders ranging from the 50 cc's to the Pro-Am class. We've got a lot of our guys in, in the Pro-Am. Um, we kind of tried to stack that class. We went eight riders in there and, and trickle down from women to... I guess C riders, we've got 50cc riders, super mini riders, uh, production lights riders. Uh, right now we're, you know, we're, we're really trying to compete with the factories and just trying to, you know, get everybody to that level and get these kids used to, to representing their sponsors properly. I'm um, doing more than just putting a sticker on a bike. We're trying to actually really sell our sponsors' products and, and, you know, I mean, most of the kids you can quiz them on any sticker on their bike, they can tell you everything about that product line. Um, we're, uh, you know, right now our, our whole thing is just, you know, trying to go out and, and represent well and win races. And, and I, you know, we're, I think we're doing a pretty good job of that this year. There's um, a lot of other teams kind of out there that, that are, you know, I'd like to see them step up. And I'd, I'd really like to have a big team rivalry. You know, it's a, you know, JPMX is always a contender. They've always got a big roster. Um, I'd like to see more, you know, a pit presence and whatnot. Um, just so we can actually have, a, a, you know, a big amateur team kind of, you know, a thing going. You know, there, there's a couple that are under that Gabriel Racing seems to have stepped up. Um, right now we're getting a lot of support from Cernix and Suzuki, uh, Tucker Rocky, the way it's uh, We're still sponsored by Kellogg's. Um, you know, for the most part, man, we're, we're just trying to do our thing and trying to, you know, be the next thing to, you know, I guess like a, we want to be almost like a grassroots team, like a, a place for these guys, for these factory teams to pick their riders from. And hopefully by the time they get them, they've already been groomed. These kids have been groomed to to represent their sponsors well, to be well-spoken, to know what to say on the podium, to know how to act. Um, you know, they've got a strict, uh, you know, code of conduct that they've got to abide by to be on the team. And, uh, you know, they've got signed contracts with me that these kids, you know, if they start acting crazy, they're doing any of that stuff, um, you know, they're off the team, simple as that. Uh, you know, attendance is mandatory. Uh, pitting properly is mandatory. I mean, we, we're, it's a little strict, but, I mean, you know, there's a lot of pressure in this, and, and we just want these kids to be ready for what, you know, when Suzuki comes and snatches one of his kids out of our pits, we want the kid to, you know, for it to be like a, a seamless transition from amateur to pro. And, I, you know, I guess that's what we're here to Bobby Sharp, father of Hannah and Noah Sharp, tragically passed away recently due to a complication caused by his battle with cancer. As they always do in times of tragedy, the ATV community pulled together to help raise money for the Sharp family, bidding on items at an auction put on by the folks from Early Wines Indoor Motocross. I got your present. I don't want it. Is that what you want me to call it for? Yeah. No, you can call it. That's the wrong call. Go bird. What are you doing for? Oh, baby. Yeah. We're here at Daniel Boone where we
we had an auction last night to raise some money to help out the Sharp family who had a tragic loss of a, 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 a devoted father and husband, uh, Bobby Sharp, a great friend of ours as well. Um, we wanted to have some money to, uh, to help these people out with, with some of the bill's expenses and also some race fees. Their, their dad loved racing and loved for their kids to race, and we want to make sure they can still do this. And uh, so we, we had an auction, and people come out of the woodwork to donate stuff. We had several uh, uh, people that uh, manufacturers donate stuff. We also had uh, individual racers going to their trailer and pulling out some of the, the new items that they had stockpiled and bringing to the auction. And, and wow, what a great response we had from this. Uh, great turnout. And uh, we had Banger down here. Being our auctioneer, we raised over eleven thousand dollars for these people, and that was that was just just tremendous. We had a lot of help from uh, uh, our contingency chick Carrie Octor, um, Chuck DeBolt from uh, uh, AEM Magazine. Uh, uh, Doug Gust was up here, man. He, he spent some money and donated some of the items back to the kids who wanted it. And wow, what a great response we had for this! And uh, again, we raised over eleven thousand dollars for to help this family out. The Miss Tropic Beauty Contest held their second event at the London round of the WPSA ATV Tour. MCing this year's event was Kentucky's own up-and-coming rap artist, Casper from the K. Number one again from Simpsonville, Kentucky. She wants to be a role model for young women. So then their beauty isn't just on the outside, but it's also on the inside. That's case one night, it's so too big. The case too sliding on the floor. You know me, I'm going with the flow. On scale from one to ten, I let the fifth one hang up for me. Here we go. 
go. Check this out. Second runner up of the Miss Hawaiian Tropic Bikini Contest from Pennsylvania, Michelle Natalie. Is this take the trophy again? Let's present her with the trophy. Got our snaps in. You can uh, put, whatever you step to the side. Yeah. Our first runner-up of Miss Hawaiian Tropic Bikini Contest is number eight, Jamie Jones, out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. The winner, which is $200 and a photo shoot, I left that out, of the Miss Hawaiian Tropic right Bikini Contest, is from Richmond, Kentucky, number 11, Audrey Smith. Y'all show respect now. Give a round of applause. This is your Miss Hawaiian Tropic from London, Kentucky. With the winners announced from the Miss Hawaiian Tropic Bikini Contest, Casper took the time to give the crowd a performance before we headed off for more racing. In the bed, keep the blues. Posters all up in your room. Put your case sign up. Tell Toby to 